Aircraft carriers are often portrayed as being threatened by various missiles, being destroyed in a hail of fire from the sky. But it's the quiet hunters of the deep, the nuclear power fueled submarines, that are often the big worry for US admirals. And after decades of lagging behind US designs, Russia has finally perfected its best hunter killer sub, the Yasen class. Is it the real carrier killer? Hey, guess what? Christmas just came early. Manscaped is sponsoring this video and here's what I got. Their new performance package. The world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit. This here is Lawnmower 4.0 cordless trimmer. Cool LED light. It's got skin safe tech. Say goodbye to cuts. These are the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Mmm, nice. Let's see what else is here. The Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Thanks, Santa. Now I'll have less nose hair than you. Manscaped also added the Shears 2.0 Luxury 6-piece Stainless Steel Nail Kit. You'll be covered head to toe. Go to manscaped.com and use my promo code BINKOF20 to get 20% off, free international shipping and two free gifts. This swanky travel bag and Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. Mmm, silky. Every guy needs a Manscaped package added to their wish list. Your jingle balls will thank you. Back to submarines. The Yasen submarine has its roots in the end of the Cold War, just when the Soviets were closing the capability gap with the US subs. The first improved Akula class attack submarine was allegedly quieter than the improved Los Angeles class submarine. Next design in line, the Yasen, was laid down in 1993, still built on inertia leftover from the Soviet Union. But financial realities soon kicked in. The hull was frozen in time, for years. The project was finally restarted in 2004 and the submarine was launched in 2010. But in parallel a reworked Yasen project came to light, Yasen M, which saw many changes to the original Severodvinsk submarine. So much so that sometimes they are named as different classes. The Severodvinsk one-off class boats and the Kazan class boats. The first Kazan was finally commissioned into service earlier this year. And US Navy officials have since made some startling comments about it. On June 15th, US General Glenn Van Herc said, Russia just fielded their second Severodvinsk class submarine, which is on par with our subs, referring to quietness. He then added, within a five year period, they will have eight or nine of those submarines, which will be a persistent proximate threat off our east and west coasts that we haven't had ever in the past. When the Cold War ended, the US was ahead of the Soviet Union submarine technology in a lot of areas. The Soviets had just caught up to the LA class with their Akulas, noise-wise, but the US had the Sea Wolf class around the corner. As Russia languished for a decade or two of economic woes, the US Navy was for the most part complacent, not really investing in even newer tech. The key back then was how to retain the end of the Cold War capability, which was the Sea Wolf submarine, but make it cheaper to produce, which was the Virginia submarine. With the Yasen design and subsystems, we now see many solutions and ideas similar to the recent Block 3 Virginia submarines, and some that are still yet to come to Block 5 Virginias. Sonar-wise, the Yasen class has seen some firsts for Russian technology. Pre-Yasen boats used cylindrical sonar designs. Those were decades old design layouts. The US had moved from those to spherical sonars by the 1960s. The key was to use up as much of the submarine's nose as possible, to create the largest sonar possible, so it could be as sensitive as possible. The first Yasen, Severodvinsk, was the first Russian design to mimic that layout, using a huge spherical sonar array, which took up the entire nose of the submarine. Thus the torpedo tubes were placed to the sides of the submarine. Again, a first as all previous Russian and Soviet subs had torpedo tubes in the nose, above the sonar array. But that design was basically a remnant of Cold War thinking. With the redesign 10 years ago, the second Yasen submarine, named Kazan, saw a different design layout. Its nose received a conformal sonar array, wrapping itself around the nose of the submarine. 
It's a modern solution, which the Royal Navy's astute submarines use and which the new US Virginia class subs started using from 2014 onward. Given that such distributed sonar shape can also easily monitor the sides of the submarine, there was no need for a dedicated large side sonar anymore. So that was deleted on the second Yasen boat. Without it, the entire boat was made visibly shorter than the Severodvinsk. Further flank sonars more to the stern of the ship were retained, of course, as those are important tools of retaining situational awareness for a submarine. Just how advanced those sonars on Yasen are is somewhat beside the point, actually. While they may lag behind the US sonar to some degree, for hunting noisy surface ships such as carriers, even the older sonars were useful. Since then, digitalization of sensors has moved into the Russian armed forces as well, greatly increasing their sensitivity. If sonar advances are anywhere near where Russian raiders advanced, it's plausible current Russian sonars are several times more sensitive than the ones used on the previous Akula-class subs. Additionally, the Yasen is huge, it has room for a larger nose sonar, meaning even greater sensitivity, and due to less noise produced by the submarine itself, the sonar sensitivity can be exploited even further. The bottom line is, hearing a carrier doing aircraft operations from great distances should be quite doable for the Yasin. When it comes to weapons, back at the end of the Cold War, the Soviets had two means of attacking ships. Using really big anti-ship missiles, fired from really big specialized submarines, and using the more standard attack submarines, like the Akula class, to come fairly close and use torpedoes. Due to their universal torpedoes lagging behind US ones in capability and their fairly noisy subs, they also used really big dedicated anti-ship torpedoes, which was a way to try to engage NATO ships from a safe distance. The Yasen combines the missile attack capability with the US-like torpedo attack capabilities. As mentioned, it doesn't feature torpedo tubes at the bow. It's got side hull launchers, much like US submarines. Given the size and position of reloading hatches on the sub, it's very likely the Yasen does not use the big 650mm torpedoes at all. While the novel torpedo launcher placement may be part of the reason, the more likely reason is that the new universal torpedoes simply became good enough. After a temporary solution of the Physic 1 torpedo, an even newer torpedo, called Futlyar or Physic 2, allegedly entered service a few years ago. This torpedo is finally very close in some capabilities to even the newest US Mark 48 Mod 7 torpedo. While the figures given are basically just repeats of the Russian media claims and are not to be taken for granted, the subsystem list does seem to hold its own against the Mark 48. It has a similarly effective engine. It has a pump jet propulsor like Mark 48. It can be guided without the wire. Exact capabilities of electronics and sonar sensitivity are of course impossible to assess, but given ever-shrinking electronics technology gap, it's not implausible that Russia is quite satisfied with the weapon it has. The bottom line is that it doesn't have to be just as good as the newest Mark 48 electronics-wise. It has to be good enough to engage destroyers and carriers, which are noise-wise much easier targets to engage than submarines. With the specifications of the universal torpedo as stated, it's not surprising that the Russians gave up on the big 650mm torpedoes. To get a 30 or 40 mile launch distance and survive, the Yasen would have to be much quieter than previous subs. In a way, the fact that big torpedoes are not needed anymore may mean the Yasen has indeed become quiet enough. But before we go on to noise levels, let us mention the missiles. The US Virginia class submarines are scheduled to introduce dedicated vertical missile launchers with Block 5 boats, coming online within several years. The Yasen already uses such a system. It has eight dedicated tubes behind the sail, and each tube is huge, designed to accept possibly larger future missile designs. Today, those tubes hold four missile cells each, for a total of 32 large missiles to be vertically fired. Unlike with a torpedo tube launch, it means the Yasen can fire off a big salvo very quickly, overwhelming ship defenses, or performing land attacks with cruise missiles. Right now, the main missile types Yasen uses are the Onyx-M anti-ship missile, basically a Russian variant of the BrahMos supersonic missile, the Caliber missile family, which includes a long-range land attack missile, 
another supersonic anti-ship missile and a missile delivering an anti-submarine torpedo had standoff ranges for long-range engagement against submarines. In late 2021, the Russian military also reported that Zircon hypersonic missile tests from Severodvinsk were completed and that the missile is in production. Basically, the missile might already be available for active service. Zircon is an anti-ship missile with land attack capabilities. Various estimates exist on its specifications, but they're all quite impressive. And the most dangerous thing about the missile is perhaps that it requires no big modifications to current launch systems. All Yasen submarines will be coming online armed with it. As the production ramps up, it will likely replace a good deal of older Onyx and Caliber missiles. So the Yasen submarine basically adds capabilities of the huge Russian missile carrying subs such as Oscar class to a more regular torpedo carrying attack subs, giving it more options to attack potential enemies. If there are outside sensors such as planes available, then their targeting info is shared with Yasen. A single Yasen firing two dozen hypersonic zircons can endanger a supercarrier despite its escort ships and their defenses. If such third-party targeting is not available, Yasen can still get to closer medium range from its target and use its torpedoes. Against big and noisy surface ships like carriers, even a remotely modern torpedo would be quite capable of keeping track of its target. While missile attacks might be achievable outside the threat range, torpedo attacks would likely not be. It's imperative for any submarine to be as quiet as possible so it can approach its prey from a favorable direction and evade escort ships if possible. Speaking of the initial Yasen submarine, an unnamed Pentagon official allegedly said that Severodvinsk had slipped into the Atlantic Ocean in 2018, evading all attempts to find her for weeks. That may or may have not been a way to drum up more spending for the Navy. It's impossible to say. But given those other US Navy statements about new Russian submarine noise levels that we shared at the beginning of the video, it's certainly plausible that Yasen may have gotten to the point where detecting it early enough is more a matter of chance than a matter of fact. There were also comments from a retired US Admiral, Joe Sastak, talking about Chinese subs, but those could also be used to define Russian capabilities as well. He said that China's constant upgrades and quieting of diesel and nuclear attack subs have led to the point where early warning detection could no longer be done by long-range passive sonar. Instead, close-by active sonar would have to be used, which basically means detection only at distances where subs are already within torpedo firing range. Mr. Sestak expanded further, saying US subs returned from deployments with sonar recordings. Afterwards, through post-deployment analysis by high-performance computers, it was revealed that there had been quiet Chinese submarines close by, which had gone undetected. It's worth pointing out another statement by US General Van Herk, who we quoted earlier in the video. He also said that Chinese submarines will be about a decade behind the current Russian submarines in capabilities, meaning the Russian subs may already be even quieter. When it comes to submarine developments, where a single class is in service for 30 or 40 years, a decade of improvements is basically just a fractional improvement. The comment about diminished use of passive sonar is perhaps the most startling. But it is certainly not unexpected. In the late 80s, there was a government hearing on the US Seawolf class, where the US Navy officials were asked about the usefulness of passive sonars. And the answer was that the Navy expects those to be effective sensors for the next few decades. Today, 30-something years later, here we are. All that is due to background noise. World seas have their own noise levels, due to various factors, averaging 60 to 90 decibels. So when a submarine's own noise drops to 90 decibels, usually quoted for modern US subs, their noise is drowned out in ambient noise. As can be expected, all submarine propulsion is designed to work at such noise frequencies that it blends in with background noise, working mostly below 100 Hz. Now whether the Russian Yasen has actually achieved 90 decibels is impossible to say. But we do know that the biggest changes to noise levels came at the end of the Cold War. As computers proliferated, the Soviets managed to get finely machined parts, which lowered noise. 
while the US Los Angeles class subs used pumps constantly to keep the reactor cooled, Seawolf and Virginia subs use natural circulation cooling for most of the reactor's envelope. The Yasen uses a somewhat similar reactor with natural circulation as well. Curiously though, Yasen does not use a shrouded propulsor. Seawolf, Virginia and British subs use them, as does Russian-owned Bore-class submarine, which is not an attack submarine, but a nuclear missile carrier. Now why that is, is unclear. Shrouded props and pump jets are usually cited as being a little bit quieter than open screws. One line of thought would be that the designer of Yasen, being different from the designer of Bore, did not have access to the same technology. Or perhaps that since the Yasen was based on basically Cold War design foundations, there was no good way to replace the propulsion later on, given that propulsors are usually designed to be integral to overall submarine shape and layout. Installing a different propulsor later on would not be as efficient as the hull would not have been planned for it. That doesn't explain why the later Kazan modification does not use a pump jet, even though it contains plenty of other drastic structural differences. Pump jets are usually credited as being inefficient power-wise at slow speeds, but that still doesn't explain why a slow patrolling Bore would use it. An attack submarine would likely do most of its patrols at medium speeds, still requiring a lot of power, which may be limited by its steam turbine. It's possible that the Yasen uses a single steam turbine like its predecessor, the Akula. While that makes the whole drive unit a bit quieter, it might also mean overall power available to the propeller shaft is more limited, so further pump jet losses are perhaps not acceptable. As we said, outside factors like ambient ocean noise, the thermocline layer in the sea blocking sound propagation, and the ability to simply dive deep, which produces less cavitation and thus added noise, can all play a role. So if the added noise of the Yasen's conventional skewback screw is still low enough to be mitigated by those other factors, then perhaps the Russian designers opted to excel in other areas, perhaps deeming noise levels to be acceptable while focusing on speed, for example. The fact is, the US aircraft carriers have never faced an opponent such as the Yasin an anti-ship missile submarine and an attack submarine all in one, with noise levels and sonar capabilities approaching those of current US submarines. With new potent torpedoes and missiles, getting through to a carrier might be quite a realistic outcome. For example, where old Soviet subs were noisy enough that just several ships in carrier's escort were enough to ensure no subs managed to sneak through, the Yasen may cause the US Navy's escorts to double in numbers, to ensure nothing slips past to the carrier. And there simply might not be enough ships around to have all the big items such as carriers, large amphibious ships and important logistics ships to be protected by half a dozen destroyers. If a threat of a single Yasin submarine can tie down many US assets just to protect those big ships, then the sub may have already done half of its job. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.